So Genity Pro lets you connect to a large number of different types of databases, but our largest community connects to Amazon's Redshift database in the cloud. And we have released uh, a tool that allows users to upload data sets uh, to Redshift. This can be a little bit of a challenge sometimes because it requires uh, typically a few steps um, to get your data up to uh, S3 uh, storage in Amazon and then to uh, run the statements that create Redshift table structures on top of that data. We have uh, linked those steps together in a, in a stepwise wizard-driven tool. Uh, we're very excited about that uh, with the release 24 uh, that comes out uh, this first week of March. Uh, we further expanded that to include uh, a job monitor to help you understand the status of that upload. And we just want to show you a quick example of how that works here. Uh, so if I have a Genity uh, Pro open, uh, I can see I've got a number of databases, but I'm also connected to Redshift. Uh, and I can see that in my Redshift demo database, um, I have a number of tables. If I happen to have uh, been given, for example, a data set, in this case, a, a CSV uh, file of uh, Medicare STARS ratings. These are ratings of uh, different providers and how well they provide Medicare services and the quality of care. Uh, the government puts this out and I, if I download this data set from the government website, I might want to uh, upload this to my database to use with other uh, provider data or other medical data in this case. Um, but this could be any sort of uh, CSV file or, or text file that you have on your desktop. Uh, or on your drive that you want to get into the Redshift database for analysis. So that's uh, sitting there on my hard drive. I can go to Agenity Pro, open tools, import from CSV, and I'm going to get a six-step process that's going to walk me through that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is choose the connection. Uh, in this case, it's only showing that uh, Redshift connections are available because that's the uh, initial database that we support. Uh, other databases will be coming uh, in the future, so feel free to give us feedback on what you'd like to see. Uh, but for Redshift, the way this works is to uh, first add that CSV file. In this case, I'll pick the stars rating CSV. It's comma delimited. Uh, it does have a header, and I can click uh, to update preview, and it'll show me some example rows uh, of what was found in that CSV file. I'm going to hit next. This information uh, next is uh, about your account that you have at AWS or at Amazon. Uh, an S3 bucket is required or access to that to, in order to upload your data. That's the first step. Um, you should have been given by your administrator an access key and a private key. So you want to paste those information there um, as well as select the region at AWS where your, your bucket exists. Um, so you're going to find that information out from your, your admin. Uh, when you go ahead and have put that in, uh, Agenity Pro will show you which buckets are available. In this case, my demo uh, has its own bucket. And then you have a few options as well uh, if you do want to leave that CSV file on the cloud after you've imported to Redshift or not. I'm just going to leave some defaults here um, because I don't, I don't really have any need for that. But I'll just go ahead and leave that uh, example there. I hit Next. You can also choose if you have a really wide data set, maybe even hundreds of columns, uh, you might want, you know, might be only interested in the first few of those. In this case, my file is pretty small, so I've got 15 columns. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave uh, the defaults that it detects here. Uh, but you can choose to kind of further slice the data if you wanted to do that. You can select uh, from that view of columns which specific ones you're interested in. Again, I'm just going to go with the default since everything's there and my file is relatively small. And I now have some options as well in order to uh, size the Redshift table to accommodate this data. So um, we will take our best guess uh, as we populate this table, uh, uh, populate the screen. Agenity Pro will take its best guess at the, the size of those columns and the types, but you can override that here. In this case, I happen to know uh, that my uh, two uh, text fields are a little bigger than what we detected, so I'm just going to make those big enough to, to not encounter any errors. Um, and then you can select the nullability of any columns as well. I'm going to hit next. Um, and then my last step is to just specify what database do I want this to exist in, uh, what schema. I'm going to give it a table name, in this case, Medicare STARS rating. 
uh, distribution. And if the table exists, you know, what do we want to do? Do we want to just abort? Um, do we want to maybe recreate the table with the new data? Uh, append this data to an existing table. Um, in this case, I'm just going to say recreate, which is the effect of dropping anything existing with this name and re recreating it. I'm going to hit submit. So you'll see on the bottom right uh, that the uh, initial population of that uh, job is successful. And we'll, um, you can now see that we've actually encountered an error. Um, so those messages are going to pop up. Um, if you happen to miss that, you can open what we call the job monitor. So down here in the bottom left, if you uh, open the job monitor, that's going to expand another tab here. And that's going to show me that uh, the uh, error that I just encountered was uh, uh, that the load into that table failed. Um, and you can check the STL load errors table system table for details. So this is a table that exists on Redshift. So one way to do that would be to just uh, do a select. And run that. Uh, and I can see now uh, uh, what that error today on the, the ninth was. I can see that uh, it actually occurred in the provider name field uh, and that uh, it looks like one of the fields that I had there has some quotes in it that aren't handled uh, correctly. So I can see the error reason over here. Uh, the invalid quote was formatted uh, for the CSV. So these are errors that are returned by Redshift, uh, stored in a Redshift table, but you can see that here. One thing I kind of like to do is um, use uh, the Agility catalog, which allows me to save queries uh, and be able to search and call those really quickly. So in, in this example, I'm always forgetting or having to rewrite what is that Redshift error table. Um, so I actually made an Agility catalog item that allows me to just show errors. So when I type errors, it gives me the uh, ability to go ahead and execute uh, a catalog query, which has the same result. And I can see here that it's showing me that table. So now I never have to remember what that table's named. I just have to remember the word errors, and I can go ahead and do that. So that's just a little tip, uh, tip or trick uh, that I've got uh, in my catalog that lets me find that faster. But let's get back to the uh, data upload. So I, I know I have an error in that file. That's going to happen with lots of your data. There might be an extra comma. There might be some bad quotes. Maybe it's too long for the field. Um, you're going to want to go back, uh, open up uh, your source file, and make any changes to that uh, to accommodate that, that error and ensure that the data is going to upload. I've already done that, so let's actually just go back um, and uh, rerun this process with a cleaned up file. So I'm going to hit import from CSV. And instead of star ratings, I'm going to get star ratings good, which I've cleaned up. Uh, the preview is going to be the same. Uh, same information uh, here as before. It's going to remember that from your previous attempt. So you don't have to keep re-entering that. Uh, I'll pick the same columns. Uh, let me go ahead and readjust this sizing. All right, and let's try this again. So I'm going to hit submit. Uh, you can actually see now that I've got the job monitor open, well, we've just inserted a new row, and uh, this job is currently running. So it's copying the data up there first to S3, and then it's going to run a command uh, to build uh, that uh, Redshift table. So let's go ahead. It looks like it's finished, uh, and it's created the table successfully. We can go ahead and see that over here. If we uh, refresh our database, we will now see that the Medicare STARS rating uh, table exists. And let's go ahead and take a look at that. There's our data. So just a couple quick steps there, uh, really shortcut a whole bunch of uh, effort that it would have taken me to do this uh, manually. We're going to continue to enhance the ability to handle errors and uh, deal with any data quality issues as, as you go. Uh, but you can see this is a pretty nice, fast uh, way to get your data, if you're an analyst, uh, get your data up into Redshift for uh, additional querying.
Hope this helps. Uh, let us know what you think of the feature. Uh, you can always do that by clicking on the on uh, our resource center, which is our little Aginity icon here. And you can always uh, click feedback uh, to give us any feedback on a, a feature or uh, that we've delivered or one that you'd like to see. So um, thanks for watching this and uh, enjoy uh, uploading data.